Welcome back to JW's Backyard. Do you lose sleep at night wondering how you can pop Willie so big? You spend a couple days in the hospital getting treated for road rash on your cheeks? Or do you like accelerating so fast that you have trouble breathing? Or do you just like going 80 miles an hour even if it takes you 10 years to get there? Well, if you're wondering how to turn that dream into a reality, today we're gonna go over gearing basics on how to get your bike or your go-kart to do what you want it to do. And it's clear from the Facebook groups, most people just don't understand gearing for these mini bikes and go-karts. I see questions all the time, like I have a Predator 212, how fast can it go? Or I can't get my mini bike to Willy. How do I fix that? Let's get into it. Let's start with axle sprockets. So very simply put, a larger axle sprocket with more teeth is going to give you more torque, faster acceleration, but you're going to sacrifice top speed. So you'll get going faster, you'll get up to speed faster, you'll have more pulling power, but you're going to sacrifice that top speed. Now on the other hand, a smaller sprocket with fewer teeth is going to have less torque, accelerate slower, but have a higher top speed. So you're sacrificing acceleration and torque for a higher top speed with that smaller sprocket with fewer teeth. Now in general, as far as drivability, if you're using this for a yard cart or something, or something just right around the yard, people usually like a little more torque because you can go off-road with it, you can climb hills, you accelerate faster, which is usually more enjoyable to the average person. But if you, you know, have a mini bike that you're riding on the road, and you just need to get up to the speed of traffic, then a smaller rear sprocket might be what you need for your build. It will let you have, maintain that higher top speed and you'll have power up top, but if you're starting off from a light, it's gonna take you a while to get up to speed. If you're one of those people trying to do a wheelie on your mini bike and it's just not getting up, you need a bigger rear sprocket. It'll give it that extra torque and help you get that thing up in the air. And as far as rear sprockets and gear ratios, People will tell you this gear ratio is the best gear ratio or you should do this gear ratio. But what you gotta realize is not everybody is building the same build and not everybody wants the same thing out of their build. So uh, something I found helpful when I was experimenting trying to figure out what I liked, I found that these split sprocket setups like I have here are really helpful because they're cheap and you can swap out gearing really quickly and experiment to see what you like. So. Essentially, you buy a axle hub, and then you can get these split sprockets with all kinds of different tooth counts that bolt on the hub here. It makes it super easy to change out your gear ratios to see what works for you and your build. Now, in this setup, I'm just using a standard clutch, but it doesn't matter if you're using a standard clutch or a torque converter like I have over here on the drift cart. The same principle applies with the axle sprocket. Larger, more torque, faster acceleration, lower speed, smaller, slower acceleration, less torque, but higher speed. So next we're gonna talk about clutches and clutch sprockets. I'm gonna talk about torque converters here in a second, but for right now, we're talking about just a standard clutch and sprocket. Now gearing up here on the crankshaft is the exact opposite of gearing down there on the axle. So a smaller, Sprocket up here on the clutch. It's going to give you more torque, faster acceleration, but a lower top speed. And a larger sprocket up here on the crankshaft will give you slower acceleration, lower torque, but a higher top speed. So another way to look at it is the closer in size that this sprocket is to this sprocket, the higher top speed you're going to get. It's real simple. They just sell different clutches with different size sprockets. You just got to be mindful when you're ordering it, what tooth count it has. And you can get, uh, these are both actually just 12 tooth, 35 chain sprockets, but you can get all kinds of different sizes, different tooth counts for different chain sizes. Now with these torque converters, just like with a standard clutch, you can adjust the gearing to get your bike or your car to do what you want. The, it's the same exact concept on the axle with a larger axle sprocket. You get more torque, faster acceleration, but lower top speed. And in turn, with a smaller axle sprocket, you get less torque, slower acceleration, but more speed. 
And with these torque converters, there's another point of adjustment. Uh, there is a little sprocket on the jack shaft behind your driven pulley that you can swap out, make it larger or smaller to adjust that gear ratio as well. But let's get this driven pulley off and I'll show you what's back behind there. So you see we have a sprocket up here on the jack shaft behind the driven pulley and with this sprocket the bigger you go the higher tooth count the less torque you're going to have the slower acceleration but higher speed you're going to have and in turn the smaller you go the less tooth count you're going to have more torque faster acceleration but a lower top speed so for example with this particular car i was trying to do wheelies with it and I was adjusting the gear ratios I'd went with a, the biggest axle sprocket I could go with but still wasn't able to do wheelies with it and I ended up going from a 12 tooth 35 chain sprocket down to this little 10 tooth sprocket and it gave me a lot more torque I was able to do wheelies but it significantly reduced my top speed And they sell all kinds of different size sprockets for this jack shaft. So that is another point where you can modify that gear ratio on a torque converter. So next we'll talk about tire size. Plain and simple, a smaller diameter tire is gonna give you more torque and faster acceleration, but lower top speed. And in turn, a larger diameter tire, like on the mini bike here, that's gonna give you a higher top speed but you're going to sacrifice torque and acceleration so next is engine rpm it should be pretty self-explanatory the faster your engine can turn the more speed you're going to get and i consolidated everything in an easy to reference diagram so if we start at the top got a smaller crank sprocket and larger axle sprocket that's better suited for more torque and better acceleration but reduced top speed and down here at the bottom, the bigger we go on the crank sprocket and the smaller we go on the axle sprocket, that's better suited for a higher top speed, but reduced torque and acceleration. So what a lot of people see with this gearing more suited for speed is that the cart or the bike's really slow at takeoff. Usually they have to push it off. A lot of times they'll have to push it off with their feet, but it's really slow to get up to speed. A lot of times they'll burn up clutches just trying to get the thing to move. But once it finally starts picking up speed, it'll go pretty fast. And you can see with the Jeep here, it has a relatively normal crank sprocket, but a relatively small axle sprocket. And it can barely get going without me pushing it off. And if I just sat there and didn't push it off, it'd burn that clutch up. And you can see it's starting off very slowly, but as we get higher up in speed, it picks up quite a bit. And that is a gear set that's more suited for speed as opposed to torque. And with the gear set more suited for torque, you'll take off really fast, but you may hit that top speed really quick. So with the mini bike here, we got a larger wheel sprocket and you can see it picked up speed pretty quickly. I didn't have to push it off but I'm gonna reach top speed a little more quickly also, and it's not gonna have quite as high of a top speed. But this is, in general, more enjoyable for just normal driving. So that's really it. That's the basics for gearing for these mini bikes and go-karts. And to address that question of, I've got this engine, how fast can it go? Uh, this is probably the question I see asked the most, and really where, where I see the most incorrect answers at, uh, what determines your top speed is your gearing, your tire size, and your engine RPM. Those three factors are what affect top speed the most. Engine size or engine power really doesn't have that big effect on top speed. 
Now, people will argue, well, what about wind resistance and the power it takes to overcome that? Or what if your engine is too weak to take advantage of the gearing that you have? Those two factors are do play roles in your top speed, but they're much less important than gearing, tire size, and engine RPM. So theoretically, if we have a seven horsepower engine and a 18 horsepower engine, and everything else is the same, the gearing's the same, tire size is the same, engine RPM is the same, they will both have the same exact top speed. Now one will get there a lot quicker, the more powerful engine will accelerate faster and get to that top speed faster, but at the end, they should have the same exact top speed. But that seems to be something that people misunderstand. So I've got two videos here. This cart has a Predator 212 with 7 or 8 horsepower and a 30 series torque converter. And we're going to compare its numbers to the next video, which is a Predator 459 with 17 to 18 horsepower. Now, what's interesting is the 212 has a much faster 60 foot time than the 459, but it's because that 212 has a torque converter that's more suited for torque and faster takeoff. And this 459 has a pretty large crank sprocket, but a small axle sprocket, which would be normally suited for speed, but it still has its governor and it's limited to 3,200 to 3,500 RPM. And the 212 has a governor removed, so it turns about 5,200 RPM. And if you notice, there wasn't that much difference in their top speed. The 212 topped out about 32 miles an hour, and the 459 topped out about 35 to 36. And that's because power really doesn't matter. It's all about gearing and RPM and tire size. That determines top speed. That's about it. If you got any questions, just put them down below. I usually try to answer about every question. Uh, if you like this content, subscribe. I'll see you next time.